Hello everyone, welcome to the awesome world of in-memory NoSQL databases and in this video series we will talk about Redis which is an open source in-memory NoSQL database. I know you might be wondering why I have used the term awesome. I believe that by the time you will see this video series you will understand what all awesome things we can do with the availability of in-memory databases. So in this particular video, we will talk about basics of Redis. So here is what we will cover in this particular video. In here, I will talk about what is in-memory database and why do we need that. Then we will talk about what is Redis and how it compares with other offerings like Memcached. And then we will talk about how to start working in Redis. We'll get familiar with Redis and we will use some basic commands. Now, even if you are having some basic idea about in-memory database or Redis, I recommend you not to skip rest of the video because I am going to talk about few things which will definitely help you to understand the usage in a better way. So now let's go ahead and see what is in-memory database. But before we go ahead and understand what is in-memory database and why it is required, let's answer one thing. What is a program? We all write programs, right? But what is a program? Any program consists of two things. Thing number one is data. Thing number two is instructions. All the programs we have written or we will write consist of two things, data and instructions. The instructions require data to do something. For example, if you want to sum two numbers, you need to provide data to numbers so that these two numbers can be summed clear right so similarly we need data for instructions so not all data set is required for execution of instructions for example sorting searching um, storing in database retrieving from database or for that matter you know um, storing state machine information okay so what happens that there are set of instruction set which either retrieves or stores large amount of data so now we know that instructions access data which is generally stored in memory. If it is not stored in memory then what will happen? It will take lots of time. And that is the main reason why in memory databases are very very helpful because accessing something from memory is much 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 time faster than accessing something from desk. And we are doing the same for quite a long time. Think about linked list. What was a linked list? It just stores data in the memory so that we can access. If you are a C++ programmer, think about what are STL containers, vectors, map, DQ. They are just containers for storing data in memory so that we can access it, right? So in here, what we are doing that instead of storing memory in our own process, in our own data structures, we have something called in memory databases to store the data in in memory so that we can access it in a faster way. Now let's talk about Redis. What is Redis? Redis is nothing but a key value in memory store. It's a key and value. So you store a key and value could be anything. There are various data types about which we will explore in upcoming videos, but just consider it as a key value in memory store. Now, it also has an option of persistence. So, you know that if something goes wrong in the server or if it is rebooted or for some weird reason Redis server itself crashes, in that case, we will not be able to recover whatever was there in the memory and that may be a loss. That's why Redis also provide a mechanism to store data in the disk for persistence. Now, you may think that uh, if you are using persistence mechanism, the database Redis database will be as slow as any other database. No, that's not a case. There are different ways of doing persistence. For example, snapshot, you can take a snapshot at a different intervals or for that matter, append only file where anything written onto the in-memory database is also written into the uh, physical database. But at the same time, if you want to read it from in-memory database, it will be fast, okay? 
Now, one important thing, Redis is primarily a key value store, but you know what, Redis is also a publish subscribe mechanism. Redis is also a streaming service. We will talk about all these functionalities of Redis in upcoming videos. Now let's talk about some of the comparison with other in-memory stores. So some of the things which you are seeing on the screen right now, they are also in-memory database or are having in-memory variant within them. For example, Memcast is a simplest in-memory key value store, but data types are limited. Apache Ignite is also a very nice in-memory data store, but it is much, much more than just an in-memory store. I mean, it's a bit heavyweight if you just want to use a simple in-memory data store. MemSQL is a SQL in memory so that, I mean, you can store all the data, relational data in memory. And I think it also provides some free tires, some free uses. MongoDB is also having an in-memory engine, but uh, this is unfortunately not available in community edition. As of now, it is available only in enterprise edition. So these are some of the prominent in-memory uh, databases. There are many other in-memory databases. Now, a very important thing, all these databases which you are seeing in your screen right now, is good for some specific purpose, so does Redis, okay? As we go through exploring the Redis, you will come to know why I talked about Redis first before talking about any other in-memory database. These databases and many other in-memory databases are equally good in many other situations. So um, there is no one solution fit all. You need to evaluate your database requirement and find out which in-memory database is good for you. For Redis, I will talk about most of the situation going forward. Okay, so let's see Redis in action. I'm not gonna go ahead with download instructions because you know what, it's pretty simple. You can just go download and follow four line steps to make it. Unfortunately, you cannot make it in Windows. You can do it in Mac and Linux, but in Windows, you can run a Docker. So I have already downloaded and installed the latest Redis in my Mac. So what I will do is that I will use a command given by Redis to start Redis server. The command is Redis server. It starts the Redis server and listen for an incoming TCP connection on a specific port. We can connect it from anywhere, whether local machine or from other machine using the IP port type. The good thing about Redis is that, you know, the drivers are available in pretty much all prominent programming languages so that uh, you can write program in any language and you have driver to access Redis and uh, send Redis command and get the value, set the values. And apart from all this, there is something called Redis command line interface. And this is the best way to learn Redis. So I will be starting with Redis command line interface. You can use command line interface all the time, whether or not somebody else is also connected uh, to the Redis server, okay? Because you know, it can accept multiple connections. So let's go ahead and see how we can start Redis and do some basic operations on it. So I am here at my terminal. Uh, I will start Redis server by calling Redis server. And you can see that Redis server is up and running, okay? Now I can use Redis command line interface by calling Redis CLI. Now I am connected to this Redis server, okay? If you are using some driver, you will connect to the same port in the same way. Now, as we know that Redis is primarily a key value store, so we can create a key and a value. So we can create a key like, uh, let's say, first, and value is hello world. There are various options which we can use about which I will talk about when I will explain the Redis command. But just for this moment, consider that key value store is set like this set key, which is first value, which is hello world. Okay means it is being done. If I want to get the key, I can say get first. If I want to know the key that are there in my Redis, I'll say keys star, sorry which is first. I can create one more key called um, second and I'll say hello universe. Okay. And if I go ahead and get the keys, I will get both first and second. Okay. So this is how you can set and get your 
key value you can delete a key by saying delete uh, you say first now integer one means it is successful and if you say key star you will get only second now what happens that uh, let me create one more key uh, first again now what will happen is that you know what when you uh, close this redis server and come back again these keys will not be there okay because what happens that yeah, you know once it goes out of memory it's a in memory data store when it goes out of memory i mean it will come up as a blank so we can just save background save okay that's all background saving started so what will happen is that whatever keys are here will be saved in the disk by the redis the format and other options i will talk about later so let me uh, come out of the command line interface uh, let me close the redis and i'll start the redis server again connect to it again and if i say keys star i will get the keys which was there earlier okay so that's the basic uses of redis now one very important thing you can get multiple information about redis by using info okay uh, like cpu usage cluster is there or not redis can also be used in a cluster with multiple nodes and memory related thing and so if you want to know about memory you can say info memory you can see that how much memory is being used right now i will talk about all those things when i will uh, talk about how to handle redis memory so that's all for this particular video this was just to give you an introduction to redis uh, from the next video onwards we will talk about redis commands and data types thanks a lot thanks for watching till the next time we meet thank you good day goodbye take care